WPGET Web Dev Tutorials for all user levels. Okay guys, still working on my uh, starter site for Element or Flexbox containers. Wanted to show you a problem I came across and a solution. It's going to be a common problem that people have. Um, looking at the screen at the moment, I've got a container. Uh, I've just called this my Reveals Row Container. And on that container, all I've done is I've told it that the direction is a row uh, and I've put a um, class on here of P-0 which is one of my utility class it just sets the padding around all the sides to zero you can just as easily do that through this UI I've got a bunch of utils um, for padding margin um, so defaults uh, using responsive padding etc so I, I prefer to use classes for this um, now Inside that container, I've got three containers. Um, each of those is just a standard basic container. Uh, I've changed none of the settings on those containers except for, uh, I think I added some classes for the uh, re the actual reveal effect and the border gradient. That's not important at this stage. It's the fact I've got three containers inside here and already on the screen, you can see they're not an equal width. Okay, so let's have a look at that in the live, if I've got that open. Uh, there it is there. So there's the live, I'm just going to do a refresh on that. Um, and you can see I've got the three columns and they're not equal width. What's actually happening is it's setting the width based on the content inside it and trying to work out using CSS engines to work out what that width should be. Uh, now, by default, these have flex shrink and flex grow set to one, which means they should fill any empty space in an equal ratio. Uh, but the problem is not the empty space. The problem is what the browser thinks the width of each of these containers should be in the first place. So the best solution for this is to not use Flexbox, is to use Flex Grid, where you specify the actual ratios of everything that goes inside it. Um, that's the best way of doing this kind of thing. Uh, now, unfortunately, at this particular particular point in time with Elementor 3.7 point whatever it is, uh, there is no flex grid capabilities. So we need to work with the Flexbox containers or we need to code our own custom HTML um, to do this. Turns out there is a solution to this, a very simple solution, uh, and I found it over here on this uh, CSS Tricks website, and there's a, there's a big discussion, I'll put a link to this in the description, uh, but I ended up using uh, what they refer to as method 2, which is setting the flex basis of all of the children to 100%. What does that actually mean? So if we look at, just trying to find my... So if we look at here, all of these three containers here are inside uh, another outer container which is set to a row. So each of these containers here is a first child of that container. With flex basis, understanding what that means is really important. Flex basis means what am I going to calculate the width of this container as? as my basis. So setting it to 100% looks at the parent container, so the full width row, and it says I'm going to try and be 100% of that width. Okay, instead of the CSS engine trying to calculate what the content is and what width it should be, Flex Basis tells it to try to be 100% of the parent container. Okay, so every single one of these, if we set them all to be flex basis of 100%, they all want to be 100% of the width of the parent, which means that to fit in a row, they're all going to scale equally to give us our equal widths. So what I've done is I've created a very simple CSS rule. Uh, let me find that rule. So I've created a very simple rule here of called flex basis children 100 and then I'm targeting all of the children of that so the first children I should say so the um, arrow to the right means I want to do the direct 
descendants. So all of the first children of that, um, I want to make the flex basis 100%. So now all I have to do is grab that class and put that on the uh, the row that's containing those those containers there. So if I put that class on that row there and update that, refresh this page. Now they're all equal width. So that's the one rule being applied to the parent. Um, I'm surprised that actually didn't show up here. Maybe we've got to refresh this editor. Maybe the CSS rule I created hadn't been refreshed in there. There we go. So even in the editor now, um, they're all equal width. Okay, so that's a really, really simple workaround. Because we don't have grid, um, we can work around this by uh, using the flex basis. Now, there is, there is some considerations with that because the flex basis does take into account your padding, etc. So it's the entire um, uh, box content um, and it can lead to some uh, errors in the calculation which is talked about in this article so I'll link to that article so you can read more about it but a very very simple solution without grid is to add a rule to set all of the first children of that row which is the containers inside that um, to a flex basis of 100% so I hope that's something that is uh, making sense to you and is going to make things a little bit easier for you when you're trying to lay these things out. All right, uh, if you like this kind of thing, please subscribe, please hit the like button. Thank you.